Do you spend a lot of time on the computer? If so, this mouse may be an excellent option to give your wrist some rest. In this video, we're going to talk about the Elecom Huge, and we're going to review it specifically from a Linux perspective. And I'm also going to show you some configuration tricks that can help you get a little more use out of the mouse. So first, we'll go over general thoughts about the mouse. And if it's not obvious, I like it fairly well. Oh, and for good measure, we have a wireless one as well. Needless to say, I have put quite a bit of time in with this mouse in various situations. I spend a lot of time at my desk. At the time, I was I had a desk in my office here and I had another desk in another room. And so I picked up two different wired versions to use. I was also occasionally having to go into the office at work. And so I picked up a wireless one to take with me. For me, I like to set things up as frictionless as possible. So this generally stays in my bag and I don't take it out until I had to bring it out for this review. So I'll be showing some footage of the buttons up a bit closer, but just to provide some context, we have a function button here. We have a right click. We have, of course, the ball. We have two more function buttons, a forward and a back button, as well as the scroll wheel and middle click. And then this is left click. And down here at the very bottom, I'm trying to see if I can get that to focus in the right light here. There we go. And down right here, you can see this little slider. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, what it does when we go over to the screen. But that actually changes the DPI of the trackball. So let's talk about the Pro. Pro, you can plug this right in and its basic functionality is going to work. You're going to be able to move the cursor around with the ball. You're going to be able to right and left click. All that basic functionality is going to work. I find that it fits my hand very well. I like that this is soft. There's some padding here. It's kind of getting a little deformed. And overall, this like this is a good grip. And the feet on the bottom, they provide a good grip on the desk. Like I don't have this moving around unexpectedly on me. And one thing to note, if you're going to look at another trackball beyond this one, some of them will actually have it so your thumb drives it. I would not go that route. I would make sure that whatever it is that your index finger can drive the trackball. Additionally, if you're not a fan of how big this is, there is a smaller version with a similar setup, and I suspect it would work very similarly on Linux. To get to anywhere on the screen, it's just finger movements. There's not anything else that I need to worry about doing. I don't have to move this around. This is also really nice if you don't have a lot of room on your desk because you don't have to move this around. You just have to move the ball. So a few things that I do think that can improve. First, the function buttons by default in Linux do not work. They don't do anything. The forward and back buttons do. They let you go forward and back in the browser, but the function buttons don't actually work. We are gonna take a look at some configuration tricks you can do to actually get some use out of those though. The other really big thing that I really want in a mouse at this point is a frictionless scroll wheel. And there is no option to change the friction on this scroll wheel. You can't just spin it like you can gaming mice, for example. The mouse I use with my Mac is this little Logitech MX3 Master. As you can see, I just touch the scroll wheel I just flick it and it keeps spinning. If I need to stop it, I just press that and now it's back to a normal scroll wheel. There's nothing like that for the Elecom Huge, but there is kind of a way to get that to work in Linux. So that ends up eliminating one of my cons. Let's take a look at some configuration and I'll show you a couple of tricks that I've found for this. I'd also mention I'm using lib input. I am not using XP input and I'm not doing anything with Wayland. So if you have Wayland, you'll need to try to translate this for Wayland. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have XE v installed i got this installed with sudo dnf install xev and i'll show you what that looks like here so if i try to open that now and say xev what it's going to do is it's going to open this little white window here and you'll notice there's a lot of information coming up on the screen if i click the left mouse button you'll see it says button press event and then button one and if i release it says button release event button one that's the key things that you need to worry about is what button number you have. So for example, the right click is button three, middle click is button two. So those function buttons, the one to the far right is button 12. The two smaller function buttons are button 10 and 11. And if you wanna do anything with the back and forward button, 
their button nine and eight. So one thing you could do is disable the back and forward button. I'm not a huge fan kind of sometimes get in the way. I think in the Windows program, you can actually make these do other things, but it's not been a huge priority for me just because I'm not one to do a whole lot of extra stuff with my mouse. I tend to look for keyboard shortcuts than I do mouse shortcuts. I have heard some people like to do things like copy and paste on their mouse. And for the Elecom Huge, I'll be updating button 10 and button 12. I'll have a link to this article in the description for any of this information. But what we want to do is we want to update this lib input comp file. I did not have this by default. So if you do have a copy, you will likely want to make a backup. But I didn't have it. I'll have the full instructions here. I'm still writing those out at the moment. But what we're going to do is we're, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And let's go and say sudo vim etc x11. Oops, it's capital X. And then 40. Oh, I haven't made it yet. I believe that's the right input, but let's double check here. 40 lib input Com. Yes. So what this will do is this will let me actually create this file. You do need sudo because this is in the etc directory. If you don't use sudo, you probably won't be able to write the file and you'll be sad because you'll have to redo this. So I just press P for put. That doesn't work because I copied it directly. So I'll do this. I and then control shift V. So I just went into insert mode and then I control shift V. That's the universal kind of paste for terminals. So what this is doing is the Elecom trackball mouse huge trackball. That's the name that the system recognizes the mouse as. Driver, we're using lib input. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say scroll method is a button. We're gonna use button 12, which is this far right this far right function button. And we're also gonna try this drag lock buttons. And we're gonna use button 10 for that. So this last option here, I've just included as a comment, just in case this is something you wanna do, but you can actually disable horizontal scrolling. I'll tell you a bit more about that once we actually see what this does. So I'll exit insert mode on WQ to quit it. And now I need to reboot. You can log out, but I just find a reboot's cleaner. So now that we've rebooted, let's take a look at what this actually does. You'll notice I can scroll down with the scroll wheel. If I hold button 12, which is this function button over here on the far right, if I hold that down and then start moving the ball, I can scroll up and down and even left and right, though I don't have an option here because it's just too narrow. But I can scroll up and down just with the ball. I don't have to use the scroll wheel at all. So if I come down and I click this button and I start scrolling down, it'll start highlighting everything without me having to hold the button down. I find that clicking and scrolling through a lot of text with a trackball can be a little weird at times. So that could be something that's pretty cool. I'm not sure that that's something I'll keep, but I do want to try it out. The DPI switcher. So you'll notice the rate that my mouse cursor is moving right now. I'm barely moving it back and forth. It's going from basically this line to that line with the amount I'm moving it. If I switch the DPI setting and I use the same amount of motion, you'll notice now I'm going a lot less distance. I can get kind of the in-between and then I can go full all out and I'm back to the crazy speed. But if you need something a bit slower, a bit more precise, you can turn that down so that you really have to move a lot more to actually go across the screen. On the high setting, you'll see how much I'm moving with my fingers and how much the mouse cursor is moving on the screen versus here's the low setting. One thing I would note, if the ball gets tougher to move, the easiest thing to do is to simply pop it out. I'm just applying a bit of pressure with my thumb on the bottom and make sure to clean out this area because you can, you know, have dust and stuff get down next to the sensors and it stops it from moving as smoothly as it needs to. But once you do that, you'll be all set again. I also include a link to this page here. And this is just a list of all the options that are available. Some of these, I'm not really sure what these do. Uh, button mapping would be if you want to redo the button map for your mouse. But keep in mind, if you do this, the button numbers are still the same when it comes to other commands. The button mapping comes last. So you'll notice, the back button, if I click it here, does work. I can go forward with this other button. Like I say, I'm not sure that it's something that I really want to do 
necessarily, but I guess it is cool if you're more into that idea. I looked through this list for a few minutes the other day. I didn't really see anything else particularly that stands out to me that would be really cool to add. If you happen to spot something though, definitely let me know. But overall, obviously, I'm a pretty big fan of the Elecom Huge. But I hope this was useful. I personally have become a big fan of the trackball mice for general computing. They leave a bit to be desired when it comes to gaming. I'll definitely be trying to use this scroll mode more effectively as I move forward. What are your thoughts? Are you considering a switch to the trackball mouse? I've included some Amazon Associates link in the description below, so if you're looking to pick one up, consider using those. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe below. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.